Hello and welcome to another episode of Electric Myths, a new podcast by BMW. And we are in the lovely BMW Velt and I'm joined by my co-host today, uh, Charlie. Hi everybody, I'm Charlie, I'm a racing driver and I'm very happy to be sat next to Tommy right now in the BMW Vault, exactly, where a lot of people are coming today and collecting their brand new BMWs, even driving them out of the building, quite a lot of them silently under electric power because we're seeing a lot of EVs here today. That's right, I'm actually quite jealous. I wish I was one of those people driving away at one of the cars today, especially maybe this one, the iX M60. This is fully loaded and maybe BMW will let me drive one of these away at some point. <laughs> Unless I beat you to it. Ah, we shall see. Uh, before we go ahead, I'm Tommy. I review cars and tech online as well. And today, the topic we're going to be looking at is the myth, which is electric cars will take over power grids or they affect power grids, they overload them. Is that true? Well, I mean, I've got to be honest here. I have heard a few people say that there's this urban myth that if everybody in the UK, for example, had, a, had an EV right now and they plugged it in, it would overload the grid. Mm. But I mean, that's a very flippant thing to say, right? Because yeah. we're a long way away from that reality. That's right. I mean, with any big headlines like this, it's very easy for any you know publication, for that matter, to run away with electric vehicles will overload the power grid. But there's actually more to it than that, because for that to actually happen, we'd need all the cars, all the electric cars, mm -hmm. to be on the grid at the same time, which would never happen because what? We're humans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have different time schedules, different work times and different charge times, different needs, etc. I mean, I guess this comes from the, you know, the, the thing of what do you do? Everyone gets home, or I'd say everyone used to get home at, I don't know, 5.30, 6 o'clock, plugs their kettle in, turns the telly on, and obviously that causes a big spike in demand. Mm -hmm. But I mean, one thing that just occurred to me actually moments ago is that we're getting further away from that model these days anyway, because so many more people work from home. That's correct, yeah. So a lot of people are coming and going at different times. People, people are at home during the day. Mm -hmm. So straight away, you kind of, you know, you, you know, we're bucking that myth already. That's it. So like different timings means it's never going to happen really. And there's, even if, the, if it were to happen, it's going to be up to 10 years because it's going to require around 15% of electric vehicle up uptake mm -hmm. for that to actually kick into place. And like we were saying, yeah. by 10 years time, the technology would have advanced further ahead to actually be able to cope with that level of uptake. And that's it, right? Because it's all about things like having a smart grid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I'm right in understanding this, it's, it's cities where there's kind of energy saving and energy management or built into the infrastructure of how, how the city and how specifically the power grid works, right? That's right. That's right. It's, it's a way to manage the system in a way that all the power is not being used or going to one spot at the same time. It's been uh, distributed in a way that, you know, affected areas uh, are done at the right time, like peak times and things like that. So it comes into play, mm -hmm. which is pretty smart. And some of the vehicles today, electric vehicles, they work really well with something called VTG, so vehicle to grid. So in that way, all these energy savings are pumped back into the grid using your car. So when you're not using it, you can actually help the grid to provide more power. Wow. So like the actual electric vehicle infrastructure adds like an extra level of infrastructure to the power grid. That's correct. To, yeah. to hold this capacity yeah. and pump it back in as and when it's needed. That's right. So if you were to leave your car plugged in and wow. for whatever reason you're not using it, your car knows it, the grid knows it. So you can borrow some of those energy back into the grid so that the grid can use it for other resources and other things. So there's, there's loads of ways around this. It's not one shoe fit, fit to all kind of situation. And a really, actually a really important distinction to make here is that an electric car is not like, say, a fridge or like an air conditioning unit. That's right. That is on mm. 23 hours, 24 hours a day, right? Yeah. Your, your electric vehicle is not plugged in all this time. Mm -hmm. And it's really just about thinking a bit more strategically about how, where, when you charge it. I mean, in previous episodes, you, you know, you already said, it's not that often you're having to charge your car from flat anyway. Exactly. You're just topping it up here and there. Very true. And the car's actually communicating with you to give you an idea of, you know, where and when might be a good time to do that. Yeah. And there's also a cost saving element to it as well, which is if you charge your car at certain times of the day, like peak times or whatever, mm -hmm. you'd be saving money by paying reduced tariff 
for your electric electricity. So in London, for example, some of the energy providers, mm -hmm. they would encourage you to charge at certain times of the day when it's not as, uh, as needed, for example. So that way you're saving money as well. Yeah. So actually, you know, plugging it in at six o'clock might be the most expensive time of the day. Right. And some people might have to do that. But other people are thinking, oh, OK, you know what, you know, I'm, I'm at home working all day on the, on the laptop or doing yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. you're doing. I'm going to plug it in at eight o'clock in the morning. That's it. That's it. So yeah. I think the bottom line is, yes, it's, it's a myth that's not, it does, it does have a leg in terms that if everyone was to plug in at the same time, mm. that might happen. But, but that's not the case. I mean, that's like saying this is the perfect storm. Yes, which never happens. Which never happens, yeah, right? It's like the, yeah. um, I mean, unfortunate perfect scenario if that, if that should go ahead, but that would never go ahead. And that's why that myth mm -hmm. is definitely nothing to worry about if you're thinking about uh, jumping to EV and jo joining the EV, EV game. Yeah, and, and let's be honest, you know, in summary, I mean, the, the future is just going to be more and more advanced from a technological point of view anyway. Correct. So yeah, yeah. by the time we even start to approach this scenario, we'll have all this, you know, we'll have all these smart systems in place. Absolutely. And think about it, EVs haven't been around that long and we've already got vehicle to grid. Yeah. Because the manufacturers are already thinking about the ways that we can make it better. I, I'll be honest, I didn't even know that was actually happening already. I thought right, that was yeah. just like something in the pipeline. Yeah, some, some of the vehicles have it and it's, it's, uh, it's an amazing, an amazing uh, piece of tech. Wow, <laughs> well, I've learned something. That's the point. I hope you guys have learned something new here as well at home. Uh, let us know in the comments, tag us and so on. And uh, make sure you like and share this and subscribe wherever you're consuming this content from. And uh, we shall see you in the next one.